Okay, so um, I'm Stephen Laverick. Um, I'm the integration manager with the Dans. Um, our, our mission as a company is to help authors who have English as a second language. Um, I'll probably refer to them as ESL authors uh, without even thinking about it. Um, so hopefully now you'll know what I'm talking about uh, later on. Um, so our mission is to help those ESL authors uh, through the path to publication um, in an ethical manner, of course. So um, in China, we should really um, we should really be thinking of ourselves as, as being in um, the middle of a golden age for research. Um, we've recently had the the first winner of the first Chinese winner of a Nobel Prize, um, where the research was actually conducted in China uh, by Chinese researchers. Um, in terms of articles published, China. Um, has the second highest output um, in, in quality journals. In terms of institutions, the Chinese Academy of Sciences um, is the second highest. Um, the Chinese Academy of Sciences is a, a, a huge organization in, in China. Um, over over 48,000 researchers, over um, 100, over 100 um, directly controlled uh, institutes. Um, and perhaps most importantly, um, there's an awful lot of government backing going on at the moment. Um, over the course of the last decade, um, expenditure in, in research and development has had an average growth of, 20, of over 20%. Um, government um, initiatives, such as the Thousand Talent Plan, have way, way, way exceeded uh, their expectations. Um, the initial plan to have brought back um, a thousand high quality researchers from abroad back into China. Um, they're now over 4,500 that they've brought back, um, and that's well within the, the confines that they were setting themselves. Um, China, I think everybody knows, has a bit of a, a, bit of a pollution problem. Um, so there are, there are initiatives going on to be able to, to move towards sustainable energy. Um, by, by 2020, there's an aim for 15% of all energy consumed in China to be coming from sustainable resources. Um, China is obviously looking for continued economic growth, um, trying to move away from the traditional manufacturing base uh, and using science and technology to be able to do that. So there's an awful lot going on which um, is probably in direct contrast to what we're seeing in, in the US, in Europe, uh, in Japan, um, where that growth is, is certainly nothing, nothing like what we're seeing in China. But of course, um, in a research industry which is heavily influenced by English language, um, these ESL authors have a number of challenges um, trying, to, trying to carry out the entire process in a second language. And publishers don't particularly make life easy for, um, for ESL authors to be able to do that. Um, it can be quite difficult for them to be able to navigate, um, hence the reasons for, for companies like ours uh, to be able to help people through these processes. And these, pro these problems, essentially, they, they come about through the entire process. Um, it's not just a case of you know, um, having, to, having to edit a manuscript for language. Um, people don't necessarily know best practices in terms of carrying out research in the first place. Um, where they should be, where they should be looking at um, the criteria for where they need to submit their journals to, um, which of course can lead to the path for predatory journals. Um, and we've already spoken a little bit about the um, about the problems uh, with fake peer review. Um, if essentially, if if researchers don't have the knowledge, don't have the expertise, and aren't being helped through that process, then it's very easy for them to fall into. Uh, into these traps. Um, studies have shown that it takes maybe twice as long for an ESL author to conduct their research, write up their research, um, as it does for um, a native English speaker. So in the publish or perish landscape, um, which even though it's, um, it's prevalent pretty much everywhere, um, in China, it's, um, uh, it's particularly 
um, a problem um, due to the the way in which um, the way in which um, academia looks upon these things and um, the way in which the reward systems are based in China. Um, essentially, it means that the, the pressure for people to be able to publish um, throughout uh, their research career is, um, is extremely, uh, extremely pressured. So they find themselves coming and using unethical author services. Um, Don has already spoken about um, the, the paper mills, um, the ways in which people will be looking to, to buy authorship. Um, and Duncan's already spoken about people falling into the, the peer review trap. Um, but what we're also finding is that unethical services are hijacking content from ethical author services. Uh, so what we've got here is a screenshot from um, a company that I think that Don will know um, quite well because he's also had issues with them. Um, and essentially this company has, has taken content from, from our website um, using our author biographies, mixing things up a little bit so that um, you'll, you'll see, well, as we saw again earlier on, um, pictures, of, um, pictures of gentlemen with, uh, with very feminine names um, as they try and, uh, try and disguise the fact that they're, uh, that they're using somebody else's content. Um, you can see um, on the right hand side of the screen as you're looking at it, um, there's um, some statistics there. Um, I can assure you that they're about publication success. You might not believe me, but they really are. Um, and the reason that I know this is because they're taken directly from a white paper um, which, which Edans um, carried out in, um, in conjunction with Biomed Central regarding publication success. Um, and you know, we found out there that according to um, the general acceptance rate for Biomed Central uh, for Chinese authors, which was 25%, um, if these authors were using a dance services, then the acceptance rate rose to 59%. Not these guys, that was us. According to this, these guys have a, a relationship with Biomed Central as well, but they don't. However, if I was uh, a Chinese researcher innocently looking for support through the publication process and I stumbled upon this website, I would have absolutely no way of knowing that, um, that these guys were, um, shall we say, not necessarily being fully ethical. So where does all of this lead us? Um, obviously, it's a, a, a lot of issues in, the, um, in an industry which uh, has seen very, very rapid growth over the, the course of the, the past 10, 15 years. Um, but as we see with so many things, um, so many things in China, but many things in general, that where we have this rapid growth, there isn't necessarily the infrastructure in place to be able to support that growth. Um, and this is something that um, we're going to be talking about in the second session a little bit, as to how we can help try and bring that infrastructure into place to be able to stop these high profile retractions, uh, to be able to stop um, the cause of these high profile retractions. <laughs>